Messaging systems are a very important part of game development, allowing different game objects and systems to communicate with each other without tight coupling. Default provides a very powerful messaging system that enables developers to send messages between game objects and systems with ease, and therefore is a great foundation to create event-based systems, subscription patterns and enable many more possibilities. But what's even more important, a well thought addressing system is crucial for game development, as you can access any created game object and component at any time from any place in a controlled way. So let's unfold how it works and how to use it in your game. This tutorial assumes you have a basic understanding of the building blocks of default. In short, everything in your game is an instance of game objects with components. The default messaging system simply allows objects and systems to communicate between each other. It is based on a message concept which is named and addressed like an envelope and can contain any content, like a letter with some text, some information. You can send such a generic message to any runtime instance in your game and eventually process it inside this target instance. You can send it directly to the whole game object and all its components will receive the same message or to a specific component only and it can be a script component, collision object, sprite, tile map, GUI and so on. Some components also send messages to its game object. So for example, collision objects send messages to game objects about physics collisions. Components receive those messages and react appropriately. And script components can additionally handle messages in onMessage function, where you can write whatever you want in response to a given message. This onMessage function is called automatically by the game engine in a proper engine cycle and takes a few arguments, among others the message table containing the data sent by the sender. Moreover, internal game engine systems utilize the very same messaging mechanisms and therefore you can receive messages about, for example, collisions from a physics engine. For example, every collision object which collides with another one receives messages with data about the collision. One of them is contact point response, with information about the point of collision, which objects were involved, what was the velocity or applied impulse on contact, and so on. If the collision object is attached to the same game object as a script component, you can handle and process this message in the onMessage function in this script. You can also send messages to other components, for example to the given collision object to apply force to it. Or you can communicate something to systems like a rendering system, when you want to modify some internal variables, change projections or activate special post-processing effects and handle the message in the render script. But how to send a message? In default, messages are sent using the msg.post function. This function takes up to three arguments, the URL of the target object or system, the message name or identifier, and an optional message table containing the data to be sent. The URL is a unique identifier that specifies the target object or system and can be constructed using a variety of parameters such as the object's name, the parent object's URL or the URL of a collection. We will go into more details on creating those URLs and addressing later on in this video. Message ID is a simple identifier of the message, so you can respond only to messages with given IDs. Some message IDs are already used by default, like mentioned contact point response sent by collision objects or animation done sent by a sprite component when a non-looping animation is completed. The data sent in the message could be just a variable or a simple Lua table and therefore can contain any kind of data, including numbers, strings, booleans, URLs, hashes and even other nested tables. This is a powerful feature and gives you total flexibility and control, but you need to take care about such interfaces with extra cautiousness, because you then utilize this data in the onMessage function and problems might appear when there is no data sent in the message, so keep this tidy and organized and you'll be good. The whole data is then packed in a message and sent to the given URL address. One of the key benefits of default's messaging system is that it allows developers to decouple different game objects and systems, making it easier to modify and update different parts of the game without affecting others. 
For example, a player object after successfully scoring some points could send a message to a GUI component, which keeps track of your score and whenever the player hits an enemy, the GUI could be informed about it and update your score according to the score value given in a message and display the new value on screen. On the other hand, when the enemy hits the player, the GUI could also receive information about it and change the displayed health bar in response. The player script could just notify the GUI about the event without needing to know anything about how the scorekeeping or health systems work. Unique addressing in default is a great system to access any runtime component and system. In default, there are several ways to construct addresses, depending on the context and the purpose of the address. The most common way to address a game object is to use its URL. It is a unique identifier that specifies the location of a game object in the game hierarchy. There is a great example of it in the default documentation. You have a construction of a game, main collection with interface with GUI component, and level with its own objects like player and enemy with their own components. If we want to send any message between those components, we need to refer to its correct address. And there are two types of addresses, absolute and relative. The construction of the absolute URL is always the same. At first you specify the collection, then the game object, then the component. You use special delimiters to distinguish those identifiers. After the collection identifier you put a colon. When you start the game object's identifier you put a forward slash. And when you start the component's identifier you put a hash sign. The collection identifier is sometimes referred to as a socket of the URL. It can also be a built-in system identifier, for example render system. But then you also need to note it with an at sign. The game object's identifier marks a game object's instance in the given collection. Thus, you can have the same identifiers created in different collections. It is sometimes referred to as the path of the URL. The component's identifier is at the end to mark to which component this message is sent specifically. If it is not defined, all components of the given object will receive this message. It is sometimes referred to as the fragment of the URL. You can construct addresses using msg.url function, which takes a string as an argument and produces correct socket, path and fragment hashes of the URL from it, and parses the described delimiters. You can also pass here a set of free arguments, each corresponding to the defined part of the URL. You can also create an empty msg.url construct and assign identifiers separately. An empty msg url construct is by default the address of the component in which it was created, so this particular script where you wrote it. So if a player wants to notify our GUI about the score, which in the given example is in a different collection, we would need to add a collections identifier to it, to always refer to this particular single instance of the GUI component. Then the game object's identifier is interface in this case, and finally the component's identifier is GUI, so the full address looks like like this. This is an absolute address of the GUI component and from wherever you will send it, it will always be received by this particular instance. This is a great power to refer to any instance in runtime from any place, but also a great responsibility. Like with real life addresses, the address here must be correct or it will not be sent to anything and vanish in limbo, but from this point it will only get easier I believe. Remember that all those identifiers are unique IDs defined in the collection outlined and are not tied with file names. Because of such mechanism of contextualism, something like namespaces, you can use relative addressing. And for example, if you send a message to another game object but in the same collection, you can just put a relative part with only the game object's identifier and eventually its specific component, omitting the collection identifier. This allows you to copy the same script in the other collection, for example the other level, but still use the same code to send a message between objects in this particular level. Moreover, you can specify only to which component you send the message relatively to the given game object from which you send it. And thus, you can write only one script for all game objects to for example send a message to play certain animation to its sprite component, no matter which game object it is or in which collection it is instantiated as long as the sprite component has the same name. This is so powerful and allows you to write a very generic code. In our case, we can exactly use the relative addressing to communicate between player and enemy, because they are in the same collection, in the same context. So we can start with an object's ID, enemy, and then after a hash sign address the proper component. In this case, the script with ID controller. 
If you would instantiate the same game objects with ID enemy and player in another level collection, it would still work. Similarly, some kind of a level handrail object could send a message to a music system to start playing a new track whenever the player progresses to a new level with a different theme. This also allows you to simplify audio handling. Because you can keep all your sound components in some separate generic game object responsible only for playing sounds and not duplicate similar sounds across many different game objects, but you can trigger those sounds from any other place or as a response to specific events like hitting enemy or getting hurt. And if you get this idea, you can do the same with other systems like particle effects for example. Going even further, you might want to control only a specific component of the given object like its sprite or collision object. You would then only create an address with the fragment part with the component's identifier starting with hash sign. For example, you can send a message disable to the sprite's component and it would not be visible in the game anymore. And this is the power because you can copy the same code to other scripts and they will disable their sprite components if only the identifiers would be the same in the given context in a game object. You can also utilize shorthands. A dot for this game object in address will send your message to the game object which contains the script from which it was sent. So the message will be distributed to all its components at once, no matter what the identifier of the game object is. Another shorthand is a hash sign for this component. And because you send messages from script components, this message will be sent back to the same script. And again, no matter what the identifier of the script is in the given context. When might the messaging system also be useful? Well, here's another feature of this messaging system. The messages are not direct calls to the functions like callbacks that will be called when a message is sent, so it will not prolong the current calculations in the frame in which you are working at the moment of sending this message. The system is built on reliability, that you will always send a message and receive it, but not overburden the very limited time you have between displaying frames. So a message sent in one lifecycle of your application will be received at the specific certain part of the next lifecycle iteration, which is meant to handle message receiving. This way, you can send a message from the init function and it will be dispatched later on, after all other game objects initialization phase is over, so you can safely then send a message to another object because it was already initialized. But being aware that you sometimes must do something immediately, for example play a certain animation of the sprite component in a very frame-specific fighting game, you can also use their respective APIs instead of sending messages. A little bit different it all is when it comes to components created at runtime. Because you do not specify the ID in the editor, you don't know how to address created instances up front, but you have its ID as a result from creation functions. Factory.create function returns an ID of the spawn game object and collection factory that create returns a whole table of IDs of all the spawned game objects in the given collection. What's worth noting is that I was talking about collection identifiers with little simplifications. In the end, collections are only an editor feature. They are not runtime constructs and there is no collection in runtime. The collection defines which game objects with which components to spawn and specifies the hierarchy between them, the parent-child relationships. So every time you think about the collection part of the URL, think of it rather as a socket part, which identifies the game world, a special kind of context. Default's messaging system is very efficient, allowing messages to be sent and received quickly without impacting game performance much. This makes it a great choice for games with large number of objects and systems that need to communicate with each other in real time. With messages and unique addressing in default, you can easily create entity component systems, which might be a good pattern for object-heavy bullet hell games with literally thousands of enemies and bullets, or strategy games with hundreds of units doing basically very similar actions, so could be operated in bulk. Addressing in default is a powerful feature that enables developers to organize and manage complex game structures with ease. Addressing is a valuable tool that can help you create a more flexible and efficient game. So in conclusion, the messaging and addressing systems in default are really well thought and organized constructs, but takes time to get used to and comprehend. It is worth it though. Thank you for watching and happy defaulting!